Right, I'm giving the hydro turbines the yearly check over today. My low voltage alarm is going off at the house, so I need to figure out what's going on. It's only putting out around 300 watts, uh, it should be up around 600. I built this turbine around six years ago from an old uh, smart drive washing machine and some other bits I found at the dump. It's been running continuously since then. It generates enough electricity to run all the appliances in my house and, uh, and most of the tools in the shed, apart from the compressor and uh, welder. So I have to get the uh, generator going for those. This is what it looked like when I first built it. Uh, it's obviously been sitting down here in the damp for six years, so it's got a bit of growth on it. So we'll have a look inside here and see what's going on. What the heck is that? Looks like tree roots or something. So I'll just check this uh, Pelton wheel. The bearings look alright and there's no cups missing. That's okay. I'll just take this jet off and check it. Occasionally they get a stone jammed in there. But that looks okay. Looks like I'll have to walk up the creek and check the intake filter. That's an old Matai tree, maybe five to eight hundred years old. That was here before the first settlers arrived in New Zealand. The growth rings will be really close together in that because it's in such a, uh, a dark uh, gully. So it'll be quite dense wood, I think. It's still alive. You can see the growth up the top, but you can see there's like a strip of dead bark spiraling around the outside these things tend to tend to rot from the inside out sometimes and um this one probably outlived me but it's uh, it's on the way out it'll probably be here for another few hundred years it's quite protected in this uh, valley not too much wind down here like that join has been leaking for a while. There's even a little plant growing there. So this is my water intake for the main turbine. It's just a four inch pipe. Goes about 100, 150 meters down that way. And um, it just comes up here under the gravel. And the pipe has hundreds of holes drilled in it like this. And then the end is closed off and it's got a, a windbreak material sock over it. So, um, so effectively there's three filters here does a pretty good job, I have to clean it out probably once a year, it takes about 15 minutes and um, especially around autumn time when we get a whole lot of leaves coming down the river 
a certain amount do wash off this after a rain like we get a good rain and the river comes up and it just washes all the leaves away but um get an accumulation of, of small sand and gravel going through those holes and uh, so I just have to come and dig it out by hand every now and then so anyway that's the, the filter clean so it should run a bit better now I'm only getting I was only getting 12 amps out of it at 24 volts so it should be up around um, maybe 20 amps usually so uh, hopefully that makes a difference uh, see this there seems to be more water getting through there now so go back to the turbine and check the output So this is the original turbine intake, it's a wee bit lower down than the other one. It's, that's just concreted in there. It's good having two if one of them stops, then the other one normally just keeps the fridge and freezers going. So all this pipe I just got second hand um, from an old irrigation unit. I think it was about probably $400 all up for around 300 meters of pipe so yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't want to have to buy that stuff new it would be thousands of dollars so just got to keep your eye open for uh, for bargains clearing sales and that sort of thing I haven't had to spend a lot on the on the actual setup the um, most expensive part were the power lines going up to the house that was a couple of thousand dollars um, but that's half a kilometer of power lines But it would have cost me $14,000 to connect to the grid so it, it paid for itself the first day I commissioned it really All up the whole whole setup would have cost maybe two and a half thousand dollars And um, it's been running for 16 years without too many problems they don't require a lot of maintenance, those smart drive motors. Uh, normally just change the bearings uh, once every two years. That's really all it needs doing to them. Um, I've had that, the current turbine has been running for I think six years without any problems. One of these days I'll build a, I'll build a new one but I'm just waiting for the current one to uh, to fail but it's just it just keeps going and going so you can hear the, the turbines going from here it just sounds like a washing machine on spin cycle it's going 24 7 never stops really apart from when I change the bearings and um, change the the jet because I have to put a smaller jet on when there's when there's very little flow at this time of year, um, and then I put a bigger one on over winter. So this is the lowest the stream has ever been since I've been here. Um, there's normally a lot more water than this. All right, let's see if this is any better. While we're here I'll show you my first attempts at building turbines over the uh, past 20 years. I picked up most of the parts from the dump so they're not the flashiest looking machines. This was my first prototype. It lasted a few years but it wasn't very efficient. Uh, it only produced about 300 watts. I cobbled together the water wheel using an old motorbike sprocket, a saw blade and some bits of pipe. <laughs> I was on a very tight budget back in those days. But it worked alright, I mean it wasn't the most efficient thing. Pretty ugly as well, but it did the job. Looks like something out of Mad Max. This was my second attempt. It's been running for over 10 years. It's my backup turbine these days. 
It runs at low speed, uh, puts out about 5 amps. I just keep it going in case my main turbine stops. Uh, this will keep the fridge and freezers running. It works okay, but it's heavy and it's a hassle to open up to get into. So this was my third turbine I built. Basically the same as my main turbine now, but um, I left the bearings in it a bit long and the hub melted its way up. It lasted three years on the original bearings, so I try and change them every two years these days. So this is the emergency dump valve. If the inverter shuts down or the batteries overcharge for whatever reason, uh, this, this will open up and dump all the water from the pipe. This is the voltage sensor. It's just a little simple analog circuit board. If the batteries exceed 29.5 volts, it dumps all the excess power into a water heater in the stream and opens up the dump valve. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, it's a bit of a hassle when things go wrong like today. Um, I've got to come down and try and figure out what's going on, but uh, I've got most of the bugs out of it these days, so usually I only have to come down once or twice a year. It beats paying for power anyway. <laughs>